At Siba Geigy, research scientists create products which enrich the quality of our lives. Products to increase our food supply, dyes and pigments which surround us with color, pharmaceuticals to improve our health, products which reaffirm the value of science to mankind. As part of its continuing program in support of science education, Siba Geigy is pleased to present this issue of the Science Screen Report. The Science Screen Report. Developments in science, engineering, and medicine that help solve the problems of modern life. Planet Earth has about 600 active volcanoes. Shield volcanoes, like Hawaii's Mauna Loa, exude rivers of molten rock or lava, forming huge, flat shield formations like this one. While strata volcanoes, like North America's Mount St. Helens, build up cones of rock and debris, explode them away, and build them up again. On May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted with an explosive force of more than 10 megatons of TNT, leading to much new knowledge of geology, chemistry, physics, and environmental effects. This is a report on those discoveries. Volcano Mount St. Helens, a display of natural forces which remains a major focus of scientific activity. What causes volcanoes to form? The theory of continental drift proposes an ancient landmass broke up over millennia, resulting in today's continents, which continue to drift. Continents and ocean floors rest on massive basaltic rock plates carried on the dense, hot, slowly flowing mantle layer below. If one continental plate slides under another or is subducted, the deeper plate margin melts, forming zones of liquid rock magma chambers, which may emit liquid rock to the surface. This lava forms volcanoes. In other cases, two plates may drive against each other, forming mountain ranges, or slip past each other laterally, causing huge faults and earthquakes, as with California's San Andreas Fault. In still other cases, plates move apart, allowing subcrustal material to boil up, as in mid-ocean ridges. Much of the Earth's present geology and geophysics can be explained as the result of different plate interactions. In particular, many plate boundaries delineate belts of volcanoes and earthquakes, phenomena we are just beginning to understand. In the case of North America's Pacific Northwest, the small Gorda plate is subducting the North American plate several centimeters a year, setting the stage for major volcanic activity. Some 30,000 years ago, this subductance created a chain of volcanoes, including Mounts Rainier, Lassen, Baker, Hood, Shasta, and Mount St. Helens, all having erupted in the past two centuries. Of these, Mount St. Helens is the youngest and most active, and has erupted at least every 200 years for the past 40 centuries. A 1978 eruptions hazard study was accurate in predicting the scale of the 1980 eruptive event. During March and April, a volcanic hazards team recorded minor earthquakes, steam eruptions, and a deformation bulge on which sensors were placed. As one consequence, authorities closed off the surrounding area, saving the lives of thousands. For at 8.32 a.m. on May 18th, Mount St. Helens erupted. It would be more than a year, however, before the sequence of events leading up to the colossal explosion was revealed. 
Infrared weather satellite images detailed the drifting ash clouds eastward movement over the next 30 hours. Brisk upper level winds swept debris over the central states in two or three days, as revealed by these National Earth Satellite Service images. Such eruptions have long been thought to affect climate by placing volcanic materials into the stratosphere. Mount St. Helens provided data to better evaluate this theory. A pre-eruption color-coded satellite image of Mount St. Helens shows a white snow-clad peak, treeless slopes in green, surrounding forests in red, and Spirit Lake and other bodies of water in black. A post-eruption image of the volcano's aftermath shows debris, color-coded in green, spreading north from the volcano's collapsed flank. Spirit Lake, covered by floating rubble, is color-coded brown. A year later, the only change is newly sprouted vegetation, color-coded yellow. The volcanic crater is four kilometers long and two kilometers wide. After the eruption, bad weather and heavy ash fallout prevent investigation of affected areas. The Geological Survey and Sandia Laboratory airborne surveys soon follow. Nearly 600 square kilometers of timber, highways, recreational areas, and homes are found destroyed. At the site of a logging operation, the powerful lateral blast ripped away this bulldozer's cab roof. And twisted a 33-meter logging crane. A glacier fragment lies nearby, carried kilometers from the volcano's north side. Among those lost in the eruption, two were scientific observers. Robert Landsberg, buried in his car. David Johnson, body not recovered. Melting ice and snow combined with fine ash and volcanic pumice, rocks holding many air bubbles, to produce mud flows. Although light in weight, the mud flows were able to carry huge boulders great distances. The scientists found that the massive sideways blast had moved at hundreds of kilometers an hour. A slower moving debris avalanche composed of huge hot mud flows, had climbed over a five kilometer tall mountain range, then moved along the Tootle River. Displaced lake and river water, mixed with ash, dirt, and melted glacier ice, formed more mud flows, which raced down the river to destroy roads, bridges, homes, and other artifacts. Spirit Lake now holds islands of debris. Loaded with sulfur and metals, cooked by heat, its ecosystem has shifted. Large life forms are gone, unable to live in deoxygenated water. But species of bacteria chemosynthesize energy from metallic compounds and thrive. Nearby, a river valley holds a 200-meter-high mass of mud, ice, debris, water, and pumice. When river water touches hot sediments in the debris, the water flashes to steam. Twenty kilometers or more from the crater, scorched trees remain standing. Between 10 and 20 kilometers away, trees were toppled and bark blasted off. And closer than 10 kilometers, everything was blown away. Trees, grass, even topsoil, creating a lifeless moonscape. 
Despite the chance of new eruptions, various scientific investigation teams quickly move in to probe volcanic mysteries. Blast deposited material is analyzed, seeking clues to aid in forecasting future eruptions. Cars close to the blast are studied and their melted accessories, headlights, taillights, and others collected. The melting effects are then duplicated using new ones, revealing eruption temperatures reached up to 350 degrees Celsius. Studies of the timber blowdown suggest a blast cloud 10 times as dense as air, moving at 100 meters per second. Seismograph and other measurements, along with film taken by those present, reconstruct the stages of the eruption. Last active in the 1850s, Mount St. Helens is formed from the materials of previous eruptions, old ash, dust, hardened lava. Events in early 1980, minor quakes, steam eruptions, and the 300-meter rock bulge rising two meters per day suggest growing internal pressure by magma and volatile gases against the overlying rock. On May 18th at 8.32, a strong earthquake occurs. Pressure from within causes the north face to disintegrate, and a debris landslide descends into the Tootle River Valley, uncapping the volcano. Hot magma and gases breach the north slope, moving outwards and downwards, reaching the Tootle River. The resulting blast wave, moving with hurricane force, is a massive emulsion of dust, ash, water, ice, rock, and volcanic materials. The eruption continues for over 11 hours. Mount St. Helens topography has undergone significant alterations. Still active, it continues to serve as an extraordinary natural laboratory. Better volcanic eruption prediction techniques are one goal of current research. Perhaps new systems using data from outgassing, crater cracks, laser measurements, and space satellites. Eruptions can now be predicted weeks in advance instead of by only minutes or vague centuries. The causes of eruptions are also sought, as well as insights into quake processes, resources distribution, and better magma and geothermal power plants. In the past five centuries, volcanoes have killed about 200,000 people and destroyed much property. In the coming years, Mount St. Helens will be a natural laboratory for scientists studying the world's mountains of fire. Science Screen Report has been produced by Siba Geige Corporation with headquarters in Ardsley, New York as part of its continuing program in support of science education.